watching sunrise it's my skin hello everyone welcome to my channel where i share my art journey with everyone if you like art and flowers then you came to the right place today we're gonna be painting hydrangea flower this flower has been requested by my patreon students and on instagram so i thought it is time so the hardest part about painting this flower is those textured petals and i'm gonna show you a very simple way of how to create that texture you can see the colors that are gonna be used to paint it's a very limited palette First is permanent rose and the second mix is permanent rose with a little bit of neutral tint and the third one is perlin maroon with some permanent rose just for those darker centers. It's a really good habit to have is to remove the excess graphite especially when painting botanicals and with pink colors that can make pencil marks permanent. So I'm gonna be painting mostly with wet on wet especially for those main petals and that is what's gonna help us to create that texture. So I applied a clean water glaze first on first petal, very evenly, trying not to create any puddles. And then I'm picking up my first color, permanent rose, and applying it into the darker parts. And then with clean damp brush, I push that color around into the lighter areas, collecting the excess. And in that way, I create a dimension and tonal values. So already from the first glaze, we have the shadow and highlighted areas making sure all the lines are clean and nice and now as the glaze dries with clean down brush i lift off a little bit more veins of that petal and right before finishing i tap in between those veins gently with the tip of my brush either with little dots or little brush strokes creating that texture and that is the way you're gonna create those textured petals And as the glaze dries, that texture will be more apparent. And I'm just gonna repeat that process now on all of my main petals. By main, I mean all those that are up front and in the best focus and has the most texture. All those other petals that are behind or underneath that creates those very little and small and simple shapes, I'll be painting them with wet on dry because they don't have much texture. So to summarize the process, first you apply water glaze onto single petal and making sure it is a very even glaze that has no puddles. If it does, you clean your brush and take the water out on your towel and then you can collect the excess water. Then you apply your color, it's either the pink or slightly more gray pink depending on the reference into the darkest areas. Then with clean down brush, you feather it away into the lighter areas, creating the dimension. Then you clean your brush, take the water out and you lift off your veins and highlights. And last, you create the texture by tapping with clean down brush in between the veins that you lifted, regularly cleaning your brush so you have it not contaminated with color. And if you want the last thing you can do is add a little bit more color into the darkest areas if that's required.
So we've painted all those main petals that I mentioned. Now what's left is those petals behind underneath the main petals that has almost no texture and essentially those are very simple small shapes so don't require wet on wet. So I'm just gonna paint them in with wet on dry each little section at a time. I mixed up a couple of more darker colors for those couple of places that are very dark with some Sennelia red and Sennelia red and perlene maroon. So that's just like a jigsaw puzzle, just piecing together little piece at a time until it comes into this beautiful flower. So it is not as complicated as it is more time consuming. I personally like painting those kind of uh, flowers that has many different elements and shapes. And once we put those darker tones behind the petals and shadows, those petals really then come forward and pop. So make sure you have your lines clean and nice. And the first layer is done. After the first layer is done, it's really good time to remove the pencil mark. So I'm gonna do now a second layer. It will be very similar as we did on the first layer, but this time I'm gonna focus more on building the tonal value and the shadow parts. Because although it looks pretty good already, but this flower is a little bit too bland and needs more dimension, needs more color into the darkest parts. So after I apply a water glaze, I apply color mostly onto the darkest parts and now you can see now I'm using that dark red into the centers of each flower. And before I finish, I lift the highlights and create the texture. So it's very similar but the focus is more onto the shadow parts and building the color into the darkest parts. So I'm going to do the same thing on all of the petals and once I've finished with all the petals I'm going to paint in the petals behind with wet on dry.
and smile What if the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars So all the petals are done and all is left to do to paint in the centers. So I'm gonna mix up a few colors, mainly brown, and I'm using all the same primary colors that I used to paint the petals, extra yellow and blue. So I'm gonna be using Ireland yellow, phthalo blue, and permanent rose. And just changing a little bit of quantity of each, I create slightly darker, lighter browns, and a little bit of green. So my reference photo is not very clear and I can't really see very clearly those centers so I simply try to paint something as close as I can see and I'm not being as detailed as I'm just trying to mimic what I see in a reference photo and to just make it appear similar yet it's hard to see what actually is going on that's the point where you would want to use real specimen rather than reference photo because if it's something's not in focus or you can't understand it because the subject is so small so it's hard to paint it so as long as you get something as close as possible it's still gonna look natural and realistic that I can give you painting those um, centers that you don't have a good reference photo for is to make sure you provide a good tonal value and contrast so when you have those basic and main colors you want to put down really dark colors as well not to make it too light because then those centers not gonna pop and just gonna make it look the whole flower a little bit off so make sure that it's tonally correct and you have the contrast needed so that those centers just pop even though they're not exactly as they are in a reference photo. And that applies to almost all of my paintings. I always try to create the contrast. So I create those paintings that have strong highlights and really dark darks. One appropriate, of course, but not to make it too like two dimensional. You want the contrast, you want those shadows. Even if some shadows look completely black, you want to capture that and to create that contrast into your paintings. Then they look very realistic and vibrant. This little thing that I do before I finish, I just take my um, the stool and I use the needle point to scrape off a little bit of paint and a few parts where I needed some white shine so instead of using white paint and just scrub a little bit paint off and that's it and the hydrangea flower is finished and I hope you liked it full step-by-step -step class is on my patreon if you're interested with reference photo and line drawing have a nice day bye